the threat of overthrowing Zelensky within the framework of the Maidan 3 operation is still high. The danger of a coup in the country is quite high, especially considering the end of Zelensky's presidency. Military intelligence does not rule out that the threat of an attempt to overthrow the current government has not disappeared. This was stated by the official representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Andriy Yusov. The department believes that the threat of the operation to overthrow Zelensky called Maidan 3 still exists and it is quite high. Military intelligence continues to identify and neutralize threats, preventing external forces who would doubt it from carrying out a coup in the country. The main intelligence directorate did not answer how long the threat of overthrowing the president will hang around. This is a multi-layer operation. It goes on, Yusuf said. Earlier, the intelligence committee under the office of the president of Ukraine gave a forecast that a likely attempt to overthrow Zelensky could be made in the spring of 2024 and by June they would try to shake up the shutdown in the country in order to inflict defeat immediately both in Kyiv and at the front. Naturally, behind all this is Russia, which allegedly sends its agents to Ukraine at the same time recruiting Ukrainians. The goal of Operation Maidan 3 is to spread panic and incite conflict between civilians and military in Ukraine. As explained by Ukrainian intelligence, the Russians want to undermine the situation inside Ukraine as part of Operation Maidan 3. The Russians consider mass protests in the country and distrust of the authorities to be its successful outcome. The goal of the Russians inside Ukraine is to demoralize Ukrainians, sow panic among the population, drive a wedge between the military and civilians, and set everyone at odds with everyone, including representatives of the country's political leadership and civil society. The Russians also have the main directions in this operation, disrupting Ukrainian mobilization, spreading disinformation about Ukraine's inability to win, creating and spreading fakes about fatigue with Ukraine among our partners and allies in the world. The Russians' global international goal is to reduce support for our country from the pro-Ukrainian coalition in the world. Group of US congressmen Call on Pentagon to allow Ukraine to attack targets in Russia. The U.S. House of Representatives Intelligence Committee issued an appeal from both parties to Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin to authorize Ukraine to attack targets in Russia and to expand Ukrainian F-16 fighter training. According to House Intelligence Committee Chairman Michael Turner, Ukraine should be permitted to strike critical targets in Russia under specific conditions. Lawmakers feel Ukrainians are unable to properly defend themselves due to the Biden administration's strategy, so it must be changed. Ukrainian officials have expressed grave concerns, stating that the situation is worse than ever. The United States should authorize Ukraine to use weapons capable of striking targets within Russia under certain circumstances, train additional Ukrainian F-16 pilots, and bolster Ukraine's air defense systems, Turner said. The letter signed by 13 congressmen on the 21st of May reads, Our Ukrainian allies are requesting permission to use certain weapons provided by the United States to conduct operations on strategic targets inside Russian and Russian-controlled territory. It is essential the Biden administration allows Ukraine's military leaders an ability to conduct a full spectrum of operations necessary to respond to Russia's unprovoked attack on their sovereign land. There remains a critical need for a substantial number of trained pilots to operate these aircraft as the F-16 fighter jets become available to Ukraine. Graduating 12 Ukrainian pilots is simply insufficient. Ukraine is at war and slots for Ukraine must be prioritized over other foreign countries. Lawmakers also point out that Kyiv is asking for at least seven additional Patriot systems to protect large urban areas. We ask that you work with us to expedite resources as our friends in Ukraine continue to defend their territory against Russia's brutal assault and aggression. Several Democratic representatives signed the letter, including Jim Himes, Brendan Boyle, Andre Carson, and Jason Crow.
Senhor.